Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss unshielded twisted pair nitpick cable and called UTP. But before discussing in detail the UTP, let us briefly discuss the basic requirements for the data to flow by using a medium or RR cable. So as we discussed in TCP IP model, the user interacts with the application layer and this application layer by using these remaining layers hands over that data to the physical layer. And now this becomes the responsibility of the physical layer to use this medium and transmit the data from source to the destination. And remember that data is in the form of zeros and ones. Now, these zeros and ones are actually represented as electric pulses. You see, these are the electric pulses to represent these zeros and ones. And these electric pulses actually flow in the form of electric current. But the electric current has a requirement. So electric current requires a complete path from source to the destination and from destination back to the source. So for illustration, let's suppose if you want to transmit some data from this transmitter to this receiver, then what happens? Electric current flows from this transmitter to the receiver and there is a circuitry here and the, this current flows from receiver back to the transmitter and in this way, this completes the path. So one complete path is required for the electric current to flow and this electric current actually carries our data that is zeros and ones. So this was only for transmitter. It means for transmission, we need two fires to complete a path. And in the same way, if you want to send back, then again, we need to have a complete path. And for that complete path also, we need two wires. It means two wires for the transmission and the two wires for the reception. It means two pairs of wires are needed, one to transmit and second to receive. Now let's move to the unshielded twisted pair. So in previous slide, we discussed that electric current flows through the wires and this electric current carries our data. But when electric current actually flows through a wire, so what happens when electric current flows through wires? It creates electromagnetic interference or simply disturbance. So in this case, current flows and there is some electromagnetic interference around this cable when the electric current flows through this wire. And this EMI or electromagnetic interference interferes with the electric current carrying zeros and ones in the nearby wire. This, for example, this is a one wire. There may be another wire just beside it like this. And this, this EMI may interfere with the second wire adjacent to it. And this EMI within the cable are also known as crosstalk. So the crosstalk and EMI are electromagnetic interference are same thing. Now, to avoid or to reduce EMI, we twist the wires. So this is, a, this is an example of twisting. You see a wires are twisted with each other. And the, and the purpose of twisting is that we want to reduce the effect of crosstalk or electromagnetic interference. And in UTP, our unshielded twisted pair, what we do, we take two pairs of wires. We need two pairs because one pair to transmit and one pair to receive. And we combine them and we call that unshielded twisted pair. So you see, one pair, second pair, two wires, two pairs combined, this is called unshielded twisted pair, and these pairs are actually color-coded. Those wires will have some color scheme on top of that, and we wrap or we package those pairs of wires in a jacket. So this is the outer jacket, you see, this is the outer jacket, and this is the real picture which you can see in the market. This is the UTP cable we have in the market. So you see this the outer jacket and within that jacket, we have this, these pairs of wires. You can see these pairs. 
and now sometimes we have two pairs sometimes have four pairs this is because of the standard so these are two different ethernet standard one is called 1000 base t in that standard we have four wires and the standard of 10 base 2 and 100 base 2 we use two pairs of pairs of wires so and the minimum requirement is two pairs of wires so as we discussed UTP it means unshielded twisted pair question arises do we have shielded twisted pair as well yes we also have the shielded twisted pair with us what is the difference the difference is only about this shield so in this type of wire we have additional shield and that's called braided shield so braided means this kind of shape shape of the shield is there and you can see this specific shield here so this shield has been provided to reduce the effect of electromagnetic interference it means this cable will be more efficient in terms of electromagnetic interference but because of this extra shield this wire or this cable is a bit expensive and this is not as much popular as the use UTP now let's discuss about the UTP Ethernet link so how the link is established between two nodes so it is uh, UTP Ethernet link means two Ethernet nodes are connected by physical cables so for instance these are two nodes and these two nodes have network interface card installed in their computers is this this is the card which is just installed there and they are connected by using some physical cable and that cable has two pairs or four pairs of, of, of coded wires inside that and these wires are actually making a connection with the help of RJ45 connectors so RJ means registered jack 45 connectors and these are the connectors there and we call them RJ45 and these RJ45 connectors have eight pins and these pins are the locations where the wires are actually connected so these all pins are the locations where the wires will be connected and then for these connectors we have the corresponding ports so we have this rj45 ports as well these are the ports where we insert these rj45 connectors to to establish the connections now a specific kind of utp cable is one of them is a straight through cable so we have two ethernet standards so ethernet is a technology to create a local area network so in these two ethernet standards we use two pairs of wires one pair is to transmit and one pair is to receive now to understand it let's suppose that we want to connect this computer with a switch and this computer has a local area network a LAN card or the NIC card connected with it and in this NIC card we have a RJ45 port and that port has eight pins and on the other hand the switch has a port and that switch port also has eight pins and as we discussed in this standard we use two pairs one pair for transmission and one pair for the reception and in this case are by using this standard the computer transmits using pin number one and two so in this connector we have this this port we have these eight pins and out of those eight, eight pins pin number one and pin number two are used for the transmission by this computer and on this switch these port number are the sorry the pin number one and pin number two are used to receive uh, the data so we make a connection from this pin number one to pin number one and pin number two and pin number two so these two wires are used to transmit data from this computer to the switch now and and the important point is that who is going to define the job of these pins uh, who is going to define the pin configuration for this 
So there's a standard body that is called TIA or EIA slash EIA and they give us the standard, they give us the rules that which pin is used for which job. So in this case, they have defined the standard that pin number one and pin number two on the computers will be used to transmit and the pin number one and pin number two at the switch end will be used for the receiving. So there's a standard body who's going to define the rules for that. And now if when the switch wants to transmit, the switch uses, so switch also has a port and the computer also has a port. So computer now uses pin number three and six for the reception and the switch uses those pins, it means pin number three and six to transmit. It, it means when switch wants to transmit, it uses pin number three and six to the pin number three and six of the computer. So now these pins are connected with each other when we want to transmit from this switch to the computer. You see, we use two wires to transmit from computer to the switch and two wires to receive from the switch to back to the computer. So all the four wires are the two pairs of wires have been used to connect a computer with a switch. And important point is that this combination of UTP is called straight through cable and this straight through cable is used to connect dissimilar types of nodes. It means different types of nodes. For example, when we want to connect a computer with a switch, we use this straight through UTP cable. Now the problem is that if we have dissimilar nodes, we use straight through cable and the and the pin uh, combination which we discussed before. But if we have similar type of nodes, for example, if you want to connect two switches with each other, or if you want to connect two computers with each other, then what should happen? Because now, both of the nodes use the same pin combinations to transmit as well as receive. So in this case, both nodes transmit using pin number one and two and both nodes receive using pin number three and six. What, what combination should be using? So for example, in this case, we want to connect these two computers with each other and both of them have this requirement, then what we do, if this computer wants to transmit to this computer, then we connect pin number one and two of this computer with pin number three and six of this computer or this connector when we want to transmit. And when we want to receive, then we use pin number three and six. So this is the pin combination we use when we are going to connect to similar type of nodes. And this specific combination of wires or connection of wires is known as crossover UTP cable. And this crossover cable is used to connect similar type of nodes, for example, switch to switch or computer to computer. So this was all about UTP cable and their uh, pin out and depending on their pinout, we call them state through and the crossover. And after introduction of UTP cable, we have different kinds or different categories of UTP cable as well. And these categories are actually based on their quality of the cable, maybe gauge, maybe the data rate they offer, maybe the distance uh, between the nodes. So there are different categories of UTP cable in the market. We have, I have collected some of the categories of UTP cable from CAT1 to CAT8. So, and they have different data rates and they are used for different applications. So they are bit, in bit details. Maybe we can talk about them in some future video, but uh, for today, this is the end of my video and I hope this was a bit useful for you. And thank you, thank you very much for your time.